everyone, Brendan here, aka The Gut Whisperer. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about, what are those, PPIs, proton pump inhibitors. Maybe you've heard about them, maybe your doctors prescribed them, maybe you've been taking them for a really long time. And I'm gonna explain why these might be detrimental to your health. Stay tuned. Okay, let's begin. So first off, quick anatomy 101. This is the stomach, pancreas. I've really stretched out this whole diagram. Really, the pancreas is kind of lifted up underneath the stomach. Let me explain quickly how the whole digestive process works and basically what PPIs do. PPIs, proton pump inhibitors. Maybe you've had an acute set of acid reflux or heartburn and you really wanted to settle down that heat, that acidity. Well, in an acute case, PPIs or Pepsid AC or even Tums can be really, really effective at cooling down that acidity, allowing that acid reflux or the GERD to calm down, get stabilized, and then you can restart to introduce foods and retry to eat again without those symptoms. In a lot of cases, doctors will prescribe and overprescribe PPIs, proton pump inhibitors, and I'm going to explain what they do. And that is the number one prescribed medication in all of North America, more than cardiovascular medication, more than lipids, so like cholesterol medication, the number one, even more than antidepressants. Let me draw this really quick. The stomach is lined with various different cells, but in this particular case, these cells not only protect the stomach lining from acidity, but they're also responsible for the secretion of hydrochloric acid. And hydrochloric acid is the primary chemical substance that breaks down food and proteins in your stomach, really, really breaks it down so it can travel into the small intestine for further nutrient absorption. But the problem is a lot of times people will have too much stomach acid. But in most cases, people actually don't have enough stomach acid. And when people don't have a lot of stomach acid, there's gonna be a lot of undigested foods happening, traveling into the small intestine. They're going to ferment. They're going to cause gas. And which way does gas go? Gas can go up or it can go down, right? Up or down. In the case of gas going up, what's happening is you actually have undigested food particles floating into the small intestine, they're going bad, they're going rancid, they're putrefying, and they're pushing up gas. And the gas is going all the way back up into the stomach, and it's actually pushing up what little stomach acid that you have. So this stomach acid is going up, up, into the esophagus and agitating and aggravating your whole esophageal tract, causing heartburn or GERD or reflux. Now, most practitioners, they're going to prescribe proton pump inhibitors because they want to suppress the stomach acid. They're saying you have too much stomach acid, but in actuality, you don't have enough stomach acid. And I know this because I've been doing this for a really long time. If you've got heartburn and gas and upset stomach diarrhea, that I always go back to that Pepto-Bismol song, then basically you've got compromised digestion. And in most cases, you don't have adequate stomach acid. And as a result, you're getting these undigested foods entering in the small intestine and they're going bad. Now, I'm gonna explain what the pancreas does in a little bit, but without stomach acid, you're not going to get adequate digestion. And here's why. The pancreas is an organ that secretes digestive enzymes, amylase, protease, and lipase. In addition to, it's responsible for blood sugar management with the production of insulin, but we're not going there right now. But it also secretes bicarbonate, and bicarbonate is what's responsible for neutralizing all of that acidity. Here's the thing. The pancreas is a responsive organ. It responds in accordance to adequate stomach acid. So if there's not enough stomach acid, the food that's in that stomach is going to be somewhat acidic because the stomach is an acidic environment, but it's going to travel down past the duodenum into the small intestine but the pancreas isn't going to detect adequate amount of stomach acid, acidity. As a result, it's not going to release those digestive enzymes, the amylase, the protease, and the lipase. And as a result, because it's not secreting all of those enzymes, you're gonna have further undigested food particles going into the small intestine that are quite large food molecules, and they're not being digested. They're not even being absorbed. So you're gonna have a lot of undigested food particles going all the way down. And again, 
that's what's happening. That's what's causing the gas because the fermentation, the rancidity that's happening in the small intestine is essentially pushing this gas up or it's going down below expressing itself as diarrhea, for example. The pancreas secretes those three enzymes, but it also secretes the bicarbonate. The bicarbonate is what's responsible for neutralizing that acidity. And if the bicarbonate cannot be secreted, then you're going to have a lot of acidity in your small intestine. So think of it this way. You've got acidity going into the small intestine and that's hot. That's like a fire. Your body needs to extinguish it. It's going to literally put as much water and pull water from the rest of your body into the small intestine, into the large intestine, and you're going to flash out everything as fast as you can as a compromise you're not going to get nutrition absorption. Poor nutritional absorption can cascade down further line and really cause a lot of problems. So we need that stomach acid to break down as much food as we can, but also to signal to the pancreas to release those digestive enzymes. And then as a result, it's also going to release that bicarbonate to neutralize that acidity. And if you don't have adequate stomach acid, it's not going to release those pancreas. You're going to have undigested food particles floating into the small intestine and the intestine causing a lot of gas, diarrhea, malabsorption. Now, PPIs, what do they do? Where do they, where do they, what do they do for this? PPIs, P, P, I's. They basically signal to these cells in the, uh, in the stomach to stop secreting the hydrochloric acid. Now, again, in an acute setting where it's an emergency, you really need to calm down that, that stomach acid. Of course, they do work and they are effective, but not over the course of weeks and weeks and months and months and years and years. Think about it. If you're preventing the secretion of stomach acid, you're immediately halting digestion. You're preventing the whole stomach from secreting that, that, that stomach acid to break down those food proteins into smaller amino acids and so they can get absorbed into the small intestine. Without stomach acid, that pancreas can't release those digestive enzymes. Remember I told you it's a responsive organ? So the pancreas can't secrete those digestive enzymes. As a result, it can't release that bicarbonate to neutralize that acidity. So you're going to have a lot of acidity, even just what little acidity that you've got. It's going to be going to the small intestine, again, causing nutri nutritional malabsorption. That's the problem with PPIs, proton pump inhibitors. The more you suppress the stomach acid, the more you're actually going to cause a problem to the whole digestive process. The more you're going to have gas, the more you're going to have heartburn. And basically this whole stomach, it's going to atrophy to the point where it can't even produce stomach acid anymore. That actually happened to me many, many, many years ago. But I did a gut reset protocol with my uh, mentor, Dr. Nandor Bajuz. We fixed my stomach. We really, really helped with the whole digestive process. And now my stomach is functioning like a V12 Ferrari, firing on all cylinders. So basically, if you are taking PPIs over a long period of time, you've got to fix that problem. You've got to stop taking them and you've got to rebalance and you've got to reestablish your stomach's ability to secrete and produce stomach acid. If you don't, the pancreas can't do its job. You're going to get malabsorption in the small intestine. You're going to get malabsorption in the large intestine. And basically, you're going to have a whole medley of problems down the road that will lead into chronic illness and po quite possibly an autoimmune condition. So I just wanted to share that. If you know someone that's taking PPIs or if you're taking PPIs, you need to come off that as, as soon as you can. And I can help you with that. My name is Brendan and I am the Gut Whisperer. And if you're interested, I've got a gut healing protocol starting September 9th for six weeks. And that is where I can walk you through a whole process with supplements, food, strategies that can help you along the way to completely reset your digestion and get you off these horrible, horrible medications. Bye for now.